Anybody who's been on a video production location knows that not everything goes exactly perfectly every time and that we need to do a lot of troubleshooting. And very often time is of the essence. We're really under the, under the gun to get things up and going, and running perfectly. And it helps to have some good tools in order to make troubleshooting go more quickly than it would otherwise. So I've got a whole arsenal of things that I use for troubleshooting problems. I'm going to share some of those with you here today. And I'll probably save some other ones for another video in the future. But uh, yeah, there's some, some things that I've come to rely on very much in order to make sure that everything is working properly and when it's not to help me figure out what's going wrong so that I can get it fixed. So let's start with a very simple one here. This is just an outlet tester. So this is like the very first thing that I will use pulling into a venue. Before I plug any of my equipment in, I will use this outlet tester to make sure that it's wired correctly. And if I, if I plug it in and I see anything other than two orange lights, then... We're finding another source of power because I just can't risk having equipment get damaged because an outlet in a, in a venue has been wired wrong. And unfortunately, it has happened before. So, number one thing, it's a little outlet tester. These are only about $5. Certainly absolutely worth it. I have a few, a few of them around. I keep Velcro on one so I can just have it stuck to the wall next to my entrance, entrance door here in the trailer and grab it the very first thing when we pull into a venue. The next thing I'll mention is a multimeter. So this doesn't get used near as much as some of the other things that I'm going to demonstrate here today, but this is certainly an essential tool in order to help troubleshoot what's going on. So you want to definitely want to have one that can measure voltage. Um, so when you test an outlet, make sure you're getting the right voltage on an outlet. Uh, one that can measure uh, resistance and continuity, so you can check connections to make sure that they're working the way that they should. And yeah, this is just a, an absolutely essential tool for troubleshooting any sort of connection issues that might happen. Uh, with a cable or whatever so you know this is definitely a, a, a must-have um, these things are pretty inexpensive as well so you can get these things twenty dollars and less without shopping around too much so yeah make sure you've got a multimeter in your arsenal as well this one is probably one of the most used that i have uh, for testing video related stuff and change just the case but as soon as i open this up you, you guys will understand and know exactly what's going on so very often we don't know what's going on with video signals. Uh, can't tell if the signal signal is being generated the way that it is in the right format, whatever. So I make sure that I always have a monitor with me, a battery-powered monitor. In this case, this is a Blackmagic Video Assist, the seven-inch version, the original one. This is a six-gig SDI, and also has HDMI connections on it. And I utilize both of those all the time. And I keep in the case with it here an SDI cable, an HDMI cable, and I always make sure that these batteries are charged so like as soon as we get done with a venue with an event at a venue i'll uh, take this out plug it into power in the trailer and make sure that the batteries get charged i always make, have, make sure i have extra batteries as well and yeah i mainly use this for troubleshooting but it also acts as a recorder and this one so i have sd card slots here on the right and pop an sd card in there and uh, be able to record on it in, in prores or dnx hd but it's just absolutely invaluable for troubleshooting things on, on location. So making sure that the signal coming out of the camera is working properly, that it's the right format. Um, checking it out the other end of the cable, make sure that the, the signal is making it all the way to where it needs to go, and so forth. So yes, absolutely one of the most valuable tools I have in my arsenal for making sure that video connections are working the way that they're supposed to. So you know, I say I, I, I actually carry this around with me at every event and make sure that uh, all the signals are what they are and what they're supposed to be and where they're supposed to be. So very, very invaluable tool. On a similar vein, uh, troubleshooting video connections, a lot, those of you who watch the channel know that I use fiber for connections between the cameras and my trailer. And in order to help troubleshoot those, I will very often walk around with one of the Blackmagic camera converters uh, on me. So it has a, a belt clip on the back, so I can just put that on my belt and walk around with it, and then along with a short piece of fiber and an SDI cable, I can connect that up to my video assist monitor, and I can troubleshoot uh, fiber-related issues as well. So make sure that the fiber is receiving the signal that it should, and I can also reverse these, take the SDI output on the monitor, run that into the SDI input on the camera converter, and then play some video off the SD card to troubleshoot sending video connections over fiber as well. So. Another great tool that makes troubleshooting video related things over fiber much, much, much easier. Speaking of connection testing and di diagnostics, uh, I picked up this little guy just a little while ago. This is a Lumen Tech SDI to HDMI converter, which 
Some might think that's not necessarily a great troubleshooting tool, but this one actually has some things about it that make it unique and very interesting. So first of all, it actually has a screen on here. So let me power this up. It can be run off of a USB battery bank, and so I've got one of those here to power that up. And then I'm going to grab a connection that actually has a video signal on it. So I'll plug that in there, and you'll see the video signal come up. But the other thing that makes this thing very interesting is it also has uh, an eye signal eye tester as well. So in a moment here, right, there we go. So you'll actually see that the eye pattern that uh, makes up an SDI signal is visible on there as well. And that helps you to know if your cables are doing a good job of transmitting your signal. Uh, so if, they're, if the signal looks like this and you've got nice clear yellow lines on the outside and then the red portion is fairly pretty well filled in with a nice even pattern, then you're probably doing a pretty good job of transmitting that, that signal. Um, so you can, your, your cable and your connections are probably fine. If you get out to really long distances or you're using cheap cable or there's an intermittent problem with the cable, you'd be able to see this here on, on this um, as well. So it also does a cable length testing. So over here it's saying I'm, saying I'm connected to a short cable. Although their definitions of short, medium, and long are a little different than mine. In this case, we're going through a 100-foot cable, and they still call that short. But uh, anyway, so that helps you to realize what's going on with your SDI cabling as well. So, and then once you've trouble used this for troubleshooting, you can then take it and use it to actually convert SDI to HDMI. And it, it does do scaling, it does format conversion. So you've got a chart here on the back and some dip, dip switches to set which format the device actually outputs on the HDMI port there as well. So anyway, uh, great little product. I'll pro probably do a full review of this here on the channel before too long. But this is a pretty cool little thing and it helps you to get a better feel for what's really going on with your SDI cabling because of that eye pattern uh, tester that's in there as well. It seems like most of the problems that we encounter on location have to do with cables and so having a good cable tester is kind of essential as well. So here's a couple of them. Um, I've had this one a really long time but I've recently started using this other one quite a bit more. So the Behringer CT100 still available. I've had this one like 15 plus years, maybe even 20. And then the CT200, which which does the same things, but it's much fancier and has some additional connection types as well. So this is essentially allowed to, uh, allows us to make sure the cables are passing the signal that they're supposed to, that they're wired properly, and it has a feature, a pretty cool feature on it to make sure that you don't you're not dealing with intermittent signal as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this is a TRS cable, quarter inch TRS cable. Plug that in and turn on the cable testing. And this little grid here. See how well you can, yeah, you can see that on camera. Um, it actually shows how this is wired. So it's showing that pin three is wired to pin three, pin two is wired to pin two, and pin one is wired to pin one. So you get a better idea. Make sure your cables are wired the way that they're supposed to be. Uh, and this and this also lets you do test adapter cables. So if you want to do like an XOR to TRS, you can do that. In addition to having those on there, it also has some other types as well. So you've got some eighth inch over here, and then on this side you've got. RCA, some TT, and then some MIDI connections. This other one takes things quite a bit farther. It's the same concept, but it's uh, much more comprehensive in terms of the types of connections. So you've got your TRS and your XLR, but it also adds the speak-on connectors for testing speaker cables. And then you come over to the side here, you've got USB, and then you've got also got your eighth inch. And then over here, there's your MIDI and your RCA, but it also has RJ45s for testing uh, Ethernet style cable. Uh, and Again, very, very handy. Uh, this, this can also be used because most of these have three connections, but the, the, but the uh, RJ45s, those actually have eight wires in there. And so you can, you can actually use this to discover how a wire is, is uh, connected. So in this case, I've got the cable that I made for connecting my Mars T1000 intercom to audio, which so that uses an RJ45 on the base station, and then it has XLRs in order to interface into an audio system. But if we want to see how that's actually wired, say for example we want to test it against the, the uh, male XLR, so that's going to go into the input over here, and then over on this side we put, plug it into the output, and then when I turn this on, it's going to actually show, if you watch for this, you'll see that the little shorted light is lighting up uh, for connections 3 and 6, and what that's telling me the first number is the output, second number is the input. So when it lights up, so on 3 it's saying it's wired to 2, and then on 6 it's wired to 3. That lets you know that pin 3 is wired to pin 2, and then pin 6 is wired to pin 
three over here. So it shows you exactly how the cable is wired. And if I connected up uh, reverse and did the, the, uh, the female connection on the RCA, it would do essentially the same thing and let you know what's really going on there. So it's so pretty cool. These also have test tone generators in them as well. Uh, so you can generate an audio test tone to make sure that audio is passing over a signal. And this one can also generate phantom power. So you can test uh, powering a microphone, make sure that you can power a microphone properly there as well. So very, very, very handy. This is something that ought to be in pretty much everybody's uh, toolkit in order to uh, make sure that we're thoroughly able to test our cables. Uh, and I should mention that these are only testing continuity. They don't test the they basically say if you have a connection. It doesn't tell you how well the cable is actually going to pass the signal. That's an entirely different level of tester. I'm not going to demonstrate any of those here today. But uh, so anyway, so you're just testing to make sure that you actually do have a connection between um, A and B on any cable or whatever. So, all right, here's kind of a little bit more specialized one, but still this one is very, very useful. So this one's actually an Ethernet cable tester, but uh, it does a little bit more than your standard one. So. In addition to make sure that your Ethernet cable is actually able to pass the signal, you can also test for the presence of power over Ethernet. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this cable here into the PoE test port on top and then turn this on. And then I'll go to the menu and say PoE and I'll say I'll hit OK. And then it's checking the voltages on the various pins and then once I'm satisfied the things look right there. I'll hit the OK button and it will run the PoE test and come back and tell what type of PoE is there as well as the voltage along with which lines that on the cable are uh, carrying that voltage. So very, very handy because there is more than one type of, of power over Ethernet out there different, with different voltages. And so if you're unsure, you can plug this guy in and find out to make, make sure that the power over Ethernet type that you need is the one that's present on a given connection. So. Yeah, again, very, very handy, very cool tool. Anybody who works with fiber very much would probably be wise to invest in some tools for testing the quality of their connections with their fiber. So I've got a couple of those here today. So I'm going to start with the, this is a visual fault locator. Basically what this is, is a very intense light that we can shine down an optical cable. And it's a visual because, no one says visual, they, what they mean is it uses a wavelength of light that's actually visible to the human eye. In this case, it's a, a red light. So I'm going to put this adapter on the end of the cable here and then go ahead and plug that in there. And then I'll turn this on. And then on the opposite end of the cable, you'll actually be able to see that the that light is coming all the way out the end. And it's pretty intense. So, yeah, it's it's a... Uh, it's passing the signal quite well. Um, similarly, well, I should mention that um, if there are any problems along the line of fiber and you can actually see the fiber strand itself, this light will shine very, very brightly. So if you're looking at the actual fiber strand itself, you, if there's a nick or a scratch, those, sh those show up very, very prominently. Uh, and you can see where a problem is on a cable. Likewise, if you were to see some red glowing near the end of one of your cables, uh, you'd know that there's a problem there as well. A uh, similar tool, or a related tool, I should say, is an optical power meter. So I'm going to go ahead and put this adapter on there and then put this in the top. And there on screen, you can see that, I haven't calibrated this, so the number's probably a little off, but it's basically saying that there's a loss of about two and a half decibels of light from one end to the other. You can test to make sure, see how well your cables are actually passing signal as well, not just if they're passing signal. And this has been very helpful for me to try, try and figure, figure out which of my fiber cables is working well and which are kind of a little bit more iffy. And being able to take some out of service that are, are, are damaged that I wouldn't have been able to catch otherwise. And make sure that, and then you can see also, I can also see the effect of cleaning an end on a cable as well, because that can make a, a big, big difference. Um, whether you're able to pass a signal as well. So anyway, the combination of those two tools are, are kind of indispensable for troubleshooting fiber-related issues, and they're not terribly expensive e either. So less, I spent less than $100 on the combination of this and the fiber termination tool as well. So yeah, it's something that you're interested in. I'd recommend picking one of those up as well. Here's one for testing audio that I just picked up not too long ago. This is a little device from a company called Donner. It's the EM2. This is essentially a small little portable headphone amplifier, and this is very handy for troubleshooting audio issues. So you can walk around with this carrying an XLR or TRS cable and plug those in back here and plug in a headphone on the front. I, I happen to use uh, some Shure in-ear monitors. These are the SE315s. So I'll plug those into one of the two headphone jacks on the front, and then you've got a, a, a volume control here, uh, and a, basically a fader knob to let you select between inputs one and two, and then a stereo monitor switch here as well. So anyway, this uh, this has uh, certainly been 
certain, very, very useful for trying to troubleshoot audio related issues so you're able to hear what's going on with an audio connection. I should mention this only does line level audio, it does not handle microphone level audio. I wish they had one. I looked forever to try and find one that does microphone level audio as well, but I couldn't find anything. But uh, anyway, great little tool and you can, you can use it as a headphone amplifier when you're not doing troubleshooting with it as well. So oh, I should mention it's also battery powered, so it charges with a USB port here on the front and it lasts for quite a while on, on a charge. So anyway, pretty fun, pretty great little tool for troubleshooting audio related issues. Let's talk just very briefly about radio frequency troubleshooting. Uh, so those of us who use wireless microphones or other wireless systems are constantly running into issues trying to find available frequencies. And so having a device like this, this is an RF spectrum analyzer, it makes that job a lot easier. And so right now I've got this analyzing frequency range that's used by my most by most of my wireless microphones, so between 500 and 530 megahertz, and it's gathering over time basically what's going on in that signal band. So I can see very very clearly here that there's a big spike right here. I bet that's the wireless microphone that I'm using right here right now. Uh, but otherwise, it's over time it shows you it records kind of the history of what's going on, and you can see the peak amount of RF that was received on each frequency there. So that makes it much easier to try and troubleshoot and figure out where we can find available frequencies for a wireless microphone. You can test to make sure the wireless microphone is actually outputting a signal um, that we're expecting it to on the frequency that we're, we're expecting it to as well. So anyway, so these are not terribly expensive and super, super useful. This, this particular one also does frequencies that are in the 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. So it's useful for trying troubleshooting Wi-Fi related issues as well. So anyway, great thing to have. Uh, very, been very, very useful for, for me in the past. Speaking of radio frequency signals, uh, another device that's very handy for trying troubleshooting issues there is a handheld radio scanner. This is an old one I've had for a very long time. And this happens to be from Radio Shack, but there's any number of brands and whatnot out there. So anyway, these are great for actually listening in on those signals that you're seeing that you pick up on your RF spectrum analyzer. So if you're going to get one of these, make sure you're getting one that actually covers those radio bands that you're going to be using. This one doesn't cover radio bands of my wireless microphone, so it's kind of useless for that. But another similar device uh, is a software-defined radio, SDR, and those do cover those bands. And so they're very, very cheap. They're, they're super easy to get a hold of. Just pick, go to Amazon and pick one of those up and but that allows you to see what's going on not only see what's going on with the radio frequencies but also be able to tune in and listen and see what's going on what audio is present there as well so great for troubleshooting wireless audio issues as well all right this one may be a little less of a diagnostic tool but it's something that still has been has been very very useful when working on location and that's basically just a light, light meter, so this is able to determine what the light level is at any given location. So if I turn this on here, where I'm at right now, it's showing about 1400 lux. Uh, different, it also supports different units, so you can do foot candles as well. Uh, but yeah, so this is very useful if you're trying to make sure that you've got even lighting on a subject or you're lighting a green screen or, what, or whatnot. So something like this allows you to see what the actual light, measurable light level of light is and then re readjust your lights in order to make sure that you're getting more even lighting there as well. So pretty inexpensive, but it can be very, very valuable when you're dealing with lighting issues. All right, this one isn't so much sold as a diagnostic tool, but it's certainly valuable as one. And this one's gonna stand in place for several other models that do similar sort of things. But this is the 12G Cross from Decimator Design. It's a product that's designed to do video format conversion. So any format coming in can be converted to any format going out. Uh, takes takes care of all, all your scaling, frame rate conversion, all that kind of stuff. But it, it's also a great diagnostic tool because it has this screen on there. So it allows you to see what's going on with the signal coming into the unit. So in this case, I've actually got the program feed from what I'm recording right now coming onto the SDI input. And it's telling me on the first line there, S, 6 gig, 2160p 2997 so it's telling me that the signal that I'm sending out of my switcher right now is indeed 2160p at 29.97 frames per second uh, it also has similar indicators for for HDMI and for the scaler which they label as D and this one compared to the high definition version this was is their ultra high def version but the high definition version um, does not have the genlock this one has a genlock input on it as well so you can actually synchronize the output video uh, on this device to a genlock signal or, or tri-level sync, whatever the case may be. 
and it lets you see if that signal is actually present there as well. So in addition, it does have HDMI connections on the side here, so you get the same indicator there that you get with SDI, so telling you what format is coming in. And the, so anyway, it's, it's super, super, super handy for trying to see if a signal coming out of the device really is the format that you expect it to be. All right, so that's going to actually do it for now. Uh, I will do another video in the future where I have some other troubleshooting tools, particularly more in the realm of software, so di diagnosing problems that are happening on the side of the computers that we're using. Uh, but that's kind of it for now for hardware diagnostic tools. So uh, as you watch this video, I've had links pop up on the screen. Those links are not just there for purchasing, but they're also there to take you to the manufacturer's website for additional product information as well. So if you want to get more information about one of these products or purchase, you just use one of those uh, links that I've had pop up throughout the video or down in description below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week. And those who sign up as members or Patreon supporters get additional content as well. I've been doing just as many videos there as I do on the public version of the channel as well. So if you want more of this sort of content, please consider joining. That money goes directly towards buying equipment to, to do reviews and show here on the channel. It doesn't really go into my pocket. It's direct, that money directly impacts the quality of the content that's here on the channel. So please consider doing that as well. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching and have a great day.